to ourselves, what could we do that would bring um, something forward from the world's religions? This was in the uh, mid-90s. We said, let's try and um, bring forward the resources, that word is not sufficient fully, but the wellsprings of knowledge and wisdom that these traditions had for an environmental ethics. Um, so what would Confucianism and Confucian ethics look like in this sense, a, a Buddhist ethics, a, a Taoist environmental ethics, and so on. And so we put together a series of conferences at Harvard over three years on the Asian traditions, on the Western traditions, on indigenous traditions and ecology. There's now <clears throat> 10 volumes on these uh, various traditions and a website that uh, Bill mentioned earlier. And the website is where this might be helpful for your work, because we've collected the statements of world's religions on environment and on climate change. So the, the front page now has a whole section on climate change, what's happening, with statements of the various world religions and action as well. Um, there, we also did a conference in 2001, Religion and Ecology, Can the Climate Change? where we had this mix of science and some economics and a, a world religions approach to this. And you can download that if you look for Daedalus 2001. Um, the website is yale.edu backslash religion and ecology. And it has a huge amount of information, including uh, annotated bibliographies of the various world's religions, um, all the books that have been published on this topic, and so on and so forth. But let me conclude by saying that the statements of the world's religion at this point are quite wonderful and quite robust. Um, almost every religion has statements on both environment and climate change and so on. The actions are beginning to um, grow all over the world. What uh, Bishop Jeff Davies has done in South Africa um, on environmental justice and created an ecumenical group of churches working on this and has recently uh, won an award for it and has made a statement that I hope we'll pay attention to on climate change and the religions. That's one example um, and an outstanding one. There's a whole group in the U.S. called Interfaith Power and Light that Sally Bingham has done where the churches are and synagogues are changing their light bulbs, doing energy audits, and a range of things like that. Um, the evangelical community in the US has gotten on board because in 2002, a group of about 25 of them were taken to Oxford, and uh, two scientists who were also evangelicals explained the climate science to them. And they could hear it from evangelicals who were also scientists, so Jillian Cranston uh, Sir John Houghton, and that was a major change for evangelicals who saw this absolutely through the lens of, the, of justice, of the poor who are suffering, and so on, and, and brought that forward, um, and I think will continue to do so. The World Council of Churches with people like David Pullman have been working on this for a very, very long time, and you can see um, their resources. The grassroots movements, just to conclude here, um, there's a, a film that we put together called Renewal, which is religious grassroots movements, uh, eight case studies across the U.S. But I think there, there, we've also documented about a hundred around the world of these types of, of movements that are, are trying to, to call attention to care for creation and to environmental justice. <clears throat> but the two on this film, which will be shown I forget the time during the parliament, but the, the renewal film will be shown here. And two of them are focused uh, specifically on climate change. One is a Katrina um, episode, which is very, very powerful. And the other is mountaintop removal. The oldest mountains in North America, and some of the oldest in the world, are the Appalachian Range on the east coast of the US. These are being literally chopped off to get at coal, destroying um, ecosystems that are millions of years old, affecting people in the valleys, in the hollows where their water is being polluted, um, and so on. It's a very, very uh, powerful segment, but it's where the churches are coming together um, to say, this is unfair. This is absolutely something that we must reverse, we must stop. Now, 
I would suggest that we talk a great deal about energy and new forms of energy, but I think what the religions can bring is a spiritual energy that will sustain the action that needs to, to take place, that is already taking place, but a spiritual energy that is renewable and that has resilience at its heart. This wonderful term resilience is coming into play a great deal with ecology and, and climate change and so on. But I would suggest that this great transition of 150,000 years of Homo sapiens sapiens to a planetary civilization that's multi-religious, multicultural, multi-formed, will require, above all, not necessarily more international agreements, as important as they are, or more laws, but it will require this shift of the human spirit to something that is sustainable in the heart and mind and soul of humans, that we know human-Earth relations from here on in must be re-identified, must be re-understood, must be recreated fundamentally. And that is the challenge of climate change. The human resilience, the new energy of the soul, of the human community in relation to the whole Earth community. Thank you, and I hope we can do this together.